Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Nvidia announced the RTX 4070 Ti back in September 2022. We just didn't know it was going to be called the 4070 Ti back then. It was called the 4080 12GB. Here's what I think happened. I reckon Nvidia announced the 4080 12GB knowing that people would be upset to keep them in the news cycle for a longer period of time. And they already planned to unlaunch the 4080 12GB right from the start because they knew there was never going to be a 4080 12GB. It's clever marketing. It was meant to be the 4070 Ti from the jump. Keeping all of that wild speculation in mind, let's take a look at what might be the most competitive GPU of this generation so far, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. Let's get it. Let's make this easy for you guys to understand. We tested both the MSI and Gigabyte 4070 Ti card in this video in Windows only because we had a few issues with getting this card to run in Linux and we'll probably revisit Linux in the next few weeks in another video. As far as testing these cards, we retested a bunch of graphics cards we've already tested on our regular i9-12900K test bench. These are also gaming and 3D only benchmarks and we'll cover content creation and all those type of workloads at a later date in another video because we want to do a roundup of the best content creation video cards now that we've got a bunch of new cards from Nvidia and AMD. Anyway, we use testing that is repeatable and standardized and not direct gameplay testing because those results cannot be repeated and ultimately have way too many variables and are pretty unreliable. We want the only variable in all of these test videos to be the GPU itself, not a section of gameplay on a certain map. And I know many people don't like the way that we test stuff, but it's accurate and repeatable. So let's kick it off with the 1080p benchmarks. At lower resolutions, we're seeing this become a lot more CPU bound. At 1080p, there are no surprises here for me personally, and this actually shouldn't surprise you at all, given that GPUs at 1080p have been CPU bound for many, many years. We see this in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, basically from the 3080 upwards, and both of these RTX 4070 Ti's come in the middle of the performance with the Gigabyte card being slightly faster than the MSI card here. Hope this makes sense. With Superposition, we see a very different result here given that the 1080p Extreme benchmark is highly GPU bound. And this is more of a worst case scenario test. And what's more interesting here is that we see that the 4070 Ti only being about four to five frames slower than the 3090 Ti. In Cyberpunk 2077, we retested everything since they upgraded from FSR 1 to FSR 2.1 since all of the initial testing that we did when 40 series launched. We also use FSR for all cards since it's supported on everything. Comparing DLSS and FSR is not a fair comparison. We also didn't use ray tracing here at all because we wanted to even the playing field. The Gigabyte card is once again slightly faster than the 3090 Ti by a single frame. And remember, again, we are very CPU bound with this testing. Finally, in Horizon Zero Dawn, we see almost what we saw with Cyberpunk. The 4070 Ti is equaling the performance of the 4080 and outpacing the 3090 Ti by two to three frames per second. Let's move on to 1440p benchmarks. We ran the same tests again here for a bit of comparison. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, we see much of like what we saw with 1080p. However, the gap between the 4070 Ti's performance and the 3090 Ti's is much larger. On average, it's about five frames per second faster. With Superposition at 1440p, we run this one with no depth of field and motion blur turned off. We saw the 4070 Ti's actually come in behind the 3090 Ti in this occasion, but the 4070 Ti still manages to outpace both the 3090 and the 3080. In Cyberpunk 2077, we're still quite CPU bound at 1440p and we see both 4070 Ti's easily outpace the 3090 Ti and the 3080. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, we are still quite CPU bound in Horizon and we see both 4070 Ti's equaling each other in performance here with this benchmark. All right, what most of these benchmarks have told us so far is that performance for 1440p and 1080p is really strong. And this is where it all gets tipped on its head. We ran the same test again at 4K to give you an understanding of where the real strengths 
and weaknesses are with the RTX 4070 Ti. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, we see that both 4070 Ti's are in fact slower than the 3090 Ti by a measurable margin, but outpacing both the 3090 and 3080. With superposition at 4K, we see that the 3090 Ti is faster than both RTX 4070 Ti's. However, the 4070 Ti's are about as fast as a 3090 at 4K in superposition. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see that both 4070 Ti's are almost equal to the performance of the RTX 4080 and easily outpacing the 3090 Ti by around 20 frames per second on average. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K and Windows, we see the exact inverse of what we saw with Cyberpunk, with both of the 4070 Ti's being sent to the Shadow Realm at the bottom of the graph, with the 3080 being equal in performance and the 3090 and 3090 Ti easily outpacing both. Now, we ran our one hour stress test in ID64 on both 4070 Ti's in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We did notice that the MSI card did run warmer than the Gigabyte card, we also recorded the memory temperatures here as well, and we noticed that the MSI card was running significantly hotter in this test as well. Now we're running on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will be different from what we observed in this video here, but we include these results because our open air testing environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested across the board. We've done it this way from the beginning and we'll continue to do it this way going forward. As far as power consumption, we observe both cards hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 285 watts at full load over that testing period of one hour. I was actually surprised to see the exact same power draw on both cards because we sometimes see different results from different board partner cards, but we didn't encounter that on this occasion. So what are my thoughts on the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti cards in general? Overall, I think that Nvidia has really tried to position itself in a competitive price point since the release of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT and the XTX cards with competitive performance to match. A lot of what we saw with the 4070 Ti is that it competes quite well with the 3090 Ti at a fraction of the 3090 Ti's launch price. That in itself is pretty interesting. However, don't be fooled by the price just yet because yes, Nvidia did lower the price of the 4070 Ti compared to the 4080 12 gig, which is the same GPU. Don't be fooled by that. They lowered that price by 100 US dollars. However, whether or not it's enough is yet to be seen because as of launching this video, the card's not even out yet. Now, I can see that people who've held out for 30 series and even 40 series GPUs might actually consider buying the 4070 Ti because of the price and the performance compared to the 30 series cards. And you saw the results here. I hope all that makes sense. The big elephant in the room here is that the 4070 Ti is the 4080 12 gig. This isn't speculation, this is fact. The cards are exactly the same in specs. All the board partners either threw out all of the 4080 12 gig boxes and reprinted them with 4070 Ti logos on them, or the unlaunched 4080 12 gig was always going to be the 4070 Ti. One sign that indicates the prior rather than the latter is that the fact that there's no Founders Edition 4070 Ti's only partner cards. And this is where the 4070 Ti story gets even weirder. Some of the marketing and video release just today for the 4070 Ti is straight up BS. They're claiming that the card is up to three times faster than the 3090 Ti. That right there is fake news. It's not. Don't fall for these fake graphs from Nvidia. Nvidia is essentially setting themselves up for failure here, making wild claims that it's up to three times faster than the 3090 Ti. Any first party numbers should always be taken with a grain of salt. I don't even know why they said this. This is just dumb. Anyways, if you're interested in the Nvidia GeForce RTX 4070 Ti cards, they're starting at 799 US dollars or around 1,479 Aussie dollars. And they're launching on the 5th of January, 2023. They're not out yet. They'll be out probably tomorrow, but obviously prices from different board partners will be different. So use this as a guide for what the pricing should be for the 4070 Ti. Now, I'm not sure how much either of these cards that we tested in this video actually sell for, but if I had to guess, I'd say the Supreme X card from MSI is going to be the most expensive out of the two cards that we showed in this video. And at the end of the day, 
All we're doing is giving you the numbers that we found with our testing. It's up to you to make decisions on whether or not these graphics cards are something that you're going to be interested in and if it's gonna be worth your own hard earned money. I can't make you do anything. These videos are not sponsored. We just get a GPU, we test it, and that's that. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. Let us know your thoughts on the 4070 Ti. I'd like to hear what you guys think about the price to performance of this card, given what we know now that we can actually release the reviews because of the embargoes and all that jazz. Anyways. You know what the deal is, 4070 Ti, love it, hate it, it's up to you. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and we've got lots more interesting CES related content coming this week, so do make sure you're subscribed. Although, if you watch this in like six months, it's probably gonna be Computex stuff, or I don't know. I don't know why I say when we're making these videos. It doesn't really make sense if you're watching it in a couple months time. Anyways, guys. I appreciate you all very much and catch you in the next video. Bye for now. That was my MVG outro, Claire. That's oh. how he does his videos. <laughs>